18, 2016. That's the day Donald Trump made a blood enemy of the largest and most powerful organization in human history, which would be the federal government. Despite what you may remember, it wasn't anything that Trump had said about immigration or trade with China or rapists from Mexico. Those are the stories that dominated the headlines that year. Trump's a racist, they screamed. Stop him! But inside Washington, that was just noise. None of it really raided. Identity politics doesn't mean much to permanent Washington. What matters, then and now, is foreign policy. The invasions and occupations and proxy wars. The decisions that determine which global populations will thrive and which will die. The policies that come with trillion dollar price tags. The ones that, over time, have made the counties around D.C. the richest suburbs in the world. In Washington, that's what actually matters. And it's obvious when you look carefully. When there's a debate about anything else, for example, the debt ceiling, both sides take their assigned positions and they start yelling. But when Congress decides to start a war, no matter how foolish or counterproductive or obviously disconnected from America's core interests that war may be, when that happens, the leaders of both parties automatically jump behind it like circus clowns. And then they stay there, sometimes for decades, they defend that war relentlessly against all evidence until somebody finally rings the all clear bell and they can begin to admit that actually, maybe it wasn't such a great idea. We meant well, but it just didn't work out. The good news is we've learned a lot of important lessons. In the end, they usually do say something like that, but only after emotions have cooled and the damning details have begun to fade from collective memory. It's an apology that's not actually an apology, much less repentance, and it's years too late to matter in any case. But until then, that's all you're getting. Until then, no dissent is allowed. That's the first rule of Washington. But somehow, Trump didn't bother to follow it. He is from out of town, so maybe he didn't know it was a rule. Maybe he just didn't care. Either way, seven and a half years later, we can point to the precise moment that permanent Washington decided to send Donald Trump to prison. Here it is. It's from the Republican candidates debate in Greenville, South Carolina. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. They lied. Okay. They said there were weapons of mass destruction. There were none. And they knew there were none. There were no weapons of All mass right. Okay. destruction. Okay. All right. We should never have been in Iraq, Trump said. We destabilized the Middle East. Now, by